just when I thought I was out, they pulled me back in. Okay, we're in a new virtual desktop beta for the Pika New Free Link. I'll bring up my controllers here. So there's a few options on New Free Link now. Um, the H.264 Plus lets you bump up the bitrate. So if your network is good, you can go all the way up to 400 megabytes per second. And while this isn't solving the color banding in the sky, I use this test situation across all my HMDs. The color band is still here on H.264 with 400 megabyte bitrate. You can see it copes with the scene transition quite well. There's no latency spiking going on within the metrics. Um, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. I mean, I'm probably maybe a meter away from where I normally would be before I see compression on that wall texture. So it's not making a, a ginormous difference to overall compression. Um, and I've still got the sharpening feature of VD at 75%. So um, this is, will probably be good for faster moving things like sim racing. I'm not sure if 400 is still going to cut it because again is an ultimate trade-off of latency as well. So yeah, it's it's good, but I personally wouldn't use this H.264 Plus. So I'm going to move on now. I'm going to go over to the new HVEC 10-bit and explain what I see with that. Okay, we're now in the new HVEC 10-bit mode for the new free link. Still showing the controllers here. And immediately, there is no color banding in the sky, which is awesome. It doesn't solve the compression issue as such. Um, you still got distance details aren't very good. I mean, it's, it's, you're never really going to solve that, um, no matter what your bit rate really. Um, so, with this HVAC 10 bit, um, I'm using a NVIDIA RTX 3080 Ti. This is fine for slow ish head movements. If I go into a different scene, so there's contrasting colors here. You can notice the encoding latency just rock it up um, and that could be in part due to my network or it could be the uh, the actual GPU side I'll have to check out my task manager and see what the GPU is doing but uh, the headset can't really keep up so it could be backing up in in my network so don't take that encoding as just a GPU it could actually be a knocking on effects to my 5 gigahertz router here um, I have tried bring down a bit rate it doesn't doesn't really make that much of a difference but yeah for a better image on HVEC the HVEC 10 bit definitely makes a nice difference here um, this just looks more a lot more natural um, I've not seen this sky without color banding on any streaming up to this point so oculus link doesn't matter what you set there and even virtual desktop before this it's just streaming compressions um, in clear skies always gives you color banding and this seems to have solved that so that's awesome but for me this still isn't ideal because I still see that distance compression and it's not on virtual desktop it's not on Airlink to fix this it's just the nature of streaming PC VR so um, for me I'm going to move on to what my favorite part of this update is obviously saving the best to last and I'm going to switch over to the new 120 Hertz mode on the new free link Holy shit, 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 shit. Okay, and there we have it. We're in a new free link, new virtual desktop update. Switched over to the new 120 hertz mode. Now it doesn't like the overlay coming up, it will um, throw a bit of a wobbly with that, and I have got recording going at a high preset. So, still at ultra, still maxed out 150 um, on the bitrate settings for normal HVEC. You cannot do 120 hertz HVEC plus, that's just not going to happen. Um, so 120 hertz mode isn't the best game to actually show you the difference in feel. It does feel a little bit better. Beat Saber is obviously the one you want to use with 120 hertz. Um, but we are back to having the color banding in the sky because we're not at that HVEC plus anymore. Um, but the overall feel of everything is just much nicer and even with the frame rate dipping a little bit below 120 with this recording going it's uh, it's definitely much nicer than 90 um, so depending on what you want to play and how you want your headset to look I think virtual desktop has got you covered so choose between your H.264 
plus with the higher bit rate settings if you're doing anything in motion um, because anything like sim racing your ground details um, especially if you use dirt rally your stones on the ground they're all going to get lost in compression with HVEC and normal H264 so having a higher bit rate will allow that to obviously stay a bit more in tune it's still not going to be as far out as you really want but um, it will make a nice difference there the normal HVEC um, is still going to give you a better image over H264 at the lower bit rates so it you can balance out you can use either H264 or HVEC but H264 you're going to have to bump the bit rate up to get the image the same as HVEC so in all honesty this HVEC 120Hz mode is the best for me if I'm using virtual desktop I have still got to put up with that sky banding but I've had to put up that since Airlink become a thing and virtual desktop become a thing anyway so um, yeah it's not really going to solve any of your distance details all, all this is is a, bit, a boost in your frame rate um, you will need the PC to run it because again Half-Life Alex is a heavy game I've still got the game maxed out I've still got virtual desktop maxed out um, and we're up near 50 milliseconds latency which doesn't sound fantastic but that's actually helped out by the 120 hertz mode so that could probably actually be worse um, especially after I've got recording going which is increasing the decoding time which is then knocking onto the latency as well um, if you're playing Beat Saber with this 120 hertz I'm around 25 to 30 milliseconds if I bring my bit rate down because you don't necessarily need max out bit rate that, that itself um, increases that latency quite a lot by about 15 milliseconds so yeah this is a really really cool update and not forgetting the normal virtual desktop features you could actually increase um, your visuals at the medium preset use 120 hertz mode and use the snapdragon game super resolution so this is an awesome awesome application um, for one that i'm not necessarily a a VR player, PC VR player on streaming, I always choose DisplayPort, but I can't deny that Virtual Desktop is absolutely killing it right now. So definitely check this out. This is in beta at the moment. I'll leave a link to the Pico. Um, well, basically, I'll leave a link to Virtual Desktop GitHub, which has got the the Pico and Quest 2 beta builds at the moment, but it's going through testing, and from my little testing here, I've got no objections to this going out. I'm so happy to see 120 hertz in near free link. Um, this is awesome. So yeah check it out guys leave virtual desktop some love and if you haven't bought it already what the hell are you doing nice one thanks for watching cheers guys